She's like a sickness in my brain A vision standing by the window pane She ripples through the blinds And leaves me in a daze It's in the way her body moves me The way she grabs me and intoxicates Until the signal's in my mind Forget to operate Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me for another Coffee and Crime Time. In today's video, we're going over a new and developing case that at first glance appears to be simply and sadly the case of a young mother gone missing, which is really what drew me to this case in the first place because I felt a connection to this woman due to her close relationship with her 10-year-old son. I also have a 10-year-old son, and so I was really drawn in emotionally. But when you get deeper into it, there's so much more going on. And this is truly a mystery. All I can do at this point is tell you what we know so far and hope that Heidi Plank is out there somewhere, that she's okay, and that she will return to her son, who's already been forced to celebrate his 11th birthday without her, and he just desperately wants to see her and hear her voice again. But before we dive in, let's have a word from the sponsor of today's video, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a new kind of documentary streaming service, and it is the place to go to stream some of the best documentary films and series in the world that are both educational and entertaining. With over 3,000 titles currently available and more being added every single week, there's sure to be something for everybody on Magellan TV. Whether you're interested in true crime, history, science, nature, or really anything else, you will find more than enough to keep you busy watching content that will absolutely blow your mind. Now, I know many of you are already watching Magellan TV. You're talking to me about it. You're sending me messages on Instagram and Twitter telling me what you're watching. And so many more want to give it a try. So today, I have a great, great recommendation called Beasts and Witches. And guys, this is so good. I'm so happy I found it. I binged it all in one day. I stayed up till 4 o'clock in the morning watching it. This four-part series mixes animations drawn by John Howe, who's the artistic director of Lord of the Rings, and they mix those animations with um, images, wildlife images. And the series' goal is to give species that have bad reputations, like snakes, a new image by telling the audience about their part in nature and seducing the viewer with their extraordinary beauty. Not only was it incredibly informative to watch, but it's visually stunning. Magellan TV was created and built by documentary filmmakers who share your passion for gripping true stories told right. And you can watch anytime, anywhere, whether you're on the go, watching from your phone or tablet, like I'm about to be in an hour because I have to leave in an hour to go to the doctor's. And I know I'm going to be sitting in that waiting room for 30 minutes and I will be watching Magellan TV. Or if you're all curled up, cozy at home, watching in your smart TV or computer, you can always pull up Magellan TV and quickly find something that you want to watch. And everything streams to you ad-free. Uh, the, the Beasts and Witches series, that's also in 4K. It's so beautiful. A lot of the content on Magellan TV is also in 4K. And I really think you should give Magellan TV a try if you aren't watching it already. Right now, with the holidays just around the corner, Magellan TV is offering viewers of my channel a special and I think amazing offer. If you buy one gift card for an annual membership, you get one absolutely free. This is such a great deal. It means you can get Magellan TV for yourself and then give Magellan TV as a gift to someone you love for the same price. Click the link in the description box to claim your special offer now. Thank you so much to Magellan TV for sponsoring today's video. Let's dive in. Okay, so Heidi Plank is a 39-year-old mother to a 10-year-old son. She lives on Gardendale Street in Downey, California. That's located in southeast Los Angeles County. Heidi is employed as a bookkeeper at Camden Capital. That's a wealth management company, like an investment company. And they claim it is their mission to craft wealth strategies that serve their clients' life needs and help them be prepared and positioned for the future. That's what they all claim. As I said, Heidi has only one child, a son, and she shares this son with her ex-husband, Jim Wayne. And Jim Wayne has become the lead contact for law enforcement in the wake of Heidi's disappearance. 
Jim runs a beauty salon to the stars in Los Angeles, and he and Heidi were together for a few years. Uh, They dated for like two years, and then they were married for two years, but then they got divorced nine years ago, and Jim remarried a woman named Maria. Jim and Heidi share custody of their son, and it seems that they they did have, in my opinion, an amicable breakup, and they were successfully co-parenting together. There doesn't seem to be uh, any, any animosity between the two of them. And I feel that by this point, with her being missing several weeks now, if she was having issues with her ex-husband, if there was something there to reveal or spill the tea on, somebody would have by now. But I could also be completely wrong I uh, I just think that that so far from what I've seen, it appears that Jim Wayne, he seems to be a stand-up guy. But we will discuss that further in a bit. Heidi herself was last seen on October 17th, 2021. During the day, the afternoon, she attended her son's football game at his private school. And her ex-husband, Jim Wayne, reported that during the game, Heidi seemed distracted and antsy. He said one minute she was sitting with him and then the next she was at a different bleacher. Jim Wayne told the media, quote, she was sitting over here, then sitting over there, and then she was walking over there. It just seemed like she was acting antsy. Then she came over to the side that we were sitting on. I sat on the opposite side only because it was sunny on that side and I felt a little cold. It was like when somebody is not comfortable and not calm. So they're kind of moving from place to place, you know? Most people go to a football game and find a seat and they just sit down and stay there, end quote. So it seemed like Heidi was sort of restless. Uh, she, she was pacing. She was sitting on the bleachers with Jim. And then he would look around and she was gone. She was sitting on a different bleacher. And then Heidi apparently left the game at halftime without saying anything to anyone. But Jim didn't think too much of it because he was taking their son home that night. So they shared custody. It looks like Jim had their son um, that day and Heidi just came for the game. And so when she left, it wasn't as if she left her son and she was supposed to bring him home. But when Heidi didn't call um, or text that evening to say goodnight to her son and she was unresponsive to texts and calls from her son, Jim began to worry. He said that Heidi was the type of mother who texted and called her son every night that he wasn't with her without fail. And this is something I did notice about Jim Wayne. He he talks very highly of Heidi. He has often said in these interviews, she's a very good mother. He mentioned that they have different parenting styles. He's a little bit older than Heidi, I believe about 20 years. So she's in her late 30s and I think he's in his early 60s. And so he had already had previous relationships and he had previous children or child, one or two. But he basically says in these interviews, this isn't my first rodeo. I have older children. I am a little bit more strict. Heidi's kind of more lenient when it comes to parenting styles. So that's really the only thing he's ever said that would sound um, slightly negative towards her. But otherwise, I think it's just probably the truth. So initially, Jim was worried, like, Heidi would usually call and text her son. The son's calling and texting her. She's not answering. But Jim said, you know, maybe his ex-wife was busy or maybe she had taken the opportunity to fly to San Francisco and visit with a man she had been dating. Heidi's boyfriend's name is Naeem Salam, and he is actually the VP of operations for Mark Zuckerberg's charitable foundation, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Let's not think less of him because he works for Mark Zuckerberg. Heidi's ex-husband Jim mentioned that Heidi and Naeem had recently argued because Heidi wanted him to come and visit her more often in L.A., but he told her he couldn't make it as often as she wanted and as he wanted because he worked a lot in L.A. and San Francisco. It's not close. Like They're both in California, but L.A. is in, in Southern California and San Francisco is in Northern California, so it takes a lot to drive there. And flying there also, you know, you expensive, takes time, got to go to the airport, etc. Jim Wayne did say that Heidi's boyfriend, Naeem, is a good guy. Um, He doesn't suspect him at all. And Naeem seemed clueless about the fact that Heidi was missing. He just assumed that she was upset with him because they'd had a little bit of an argument and she was ghosting him when he tried calling and texting her. So the last time Heidi was seen was on surveillance footage taken outside her home on October 17th after she had left the football game. You can see her on this footage. She's walking out of her house. Looks like she's wearing jeans, a t-shirt, and what seems to be a gray sweater or sweatshirt tied around her waist. 
She's holding an iced drink, maybe an iced tea or an iced coffee. She's carrying her purse, and her little dog, Seven, is following behind her. She and Seven get into her gray Range Rover, and they drive away. A few hours later, the dog, Seven, was found in the most unexpected of places, miles away from Heidi's home, on the 28th floor of a luxury high-rise apartment in downtown Los Angeles. This is called the Hope and Flower Complex. A couple who lived in the building says they found Seven wandering the halls of the 28th floor, so they took him in. But here's the weird thing. The Hope and Flower Complex is just 200 yards away from the Staples Center. That's not the weird thing. You know, you're like, that's not weird, Stephanie. But listen, this is an expensive apartment building. It's a luxury apartment building. That means you need a key card to enter the building as well as to get into the elevator and then to ride to the 28th floor. And this is obviously intended to discourage people who don't live there from just going in there and loitering and to protect the residents of the building from outside people and dogs. From the reports that have emerged thus far, no one knows, no one knows how Seven would be in that building. And if there's a connection to Heidi, it hasn't been revealed yet. From what I've seen, her friends and family all say, you know, we don't understand why she would have been there. We don't know if she knows anybody there. We've never heard her talk about going there. So someone must have either brought Seven, the dog, into the building and to the 28th floor, or Heidi herself brought Seven, the dog, into the building and to the 28th floor. But then something happened to Heidi which caused her to abandon her dog. Heidi's ex-husband, Jim Wayne, said, quote, I'd like to know how our dog made it the 30-mile trek from Downey to downtown L.A. in about three hours, end quote. He also wants to know how did the dog get into the building into the 28th floor, a question that I think out of all the questions in this case is the most relevant on everybody's mind. One of Plank's friends told NBC that she had once picked her up at the residential building where her dog was found back in 2020, but that no one knows anything more about her connection to it. This dog was actually through four layers of security to get into that building. So somebody has to know something. So we need to need to know how the dog got in that building. We reached out to the building's management team, who says they've been working with LAPD. I believe some type of foul play. Something's definitely wrong. Something's wrong. The people I've talked to about this case, um, the the content creators I've talked to about this case, and just the detectives and things, this is the question that's burning in their, in their heads. Like, how did this dog get there? Where's the connection to Heidi? Retired San Bernardino Police Chief Jared Bougon feels that Seven being found in the building without Heidi is concerning. And he said, quote, people are very, very attached to their pets and their pets do not just go missing. There's clearly something out of place here, end quote. A friend of Heidi's told CBS, quote, it seems to us that everything stems from that building where her dog was found, end quote. And I agree. This is creepy. So when Jim Wayne and his son had not heard from Heidi in several days and she didn't show up to pick her son up from school on October 20th, Jim Wayne went to the LAPD and reported her missing. He said, quote, she's a devoted mother who would never, ever leave her son. We have a 10-year-old boy at home that's looking for his mom and we just need to find her, end quote. It's such a strange story and the more we learn about it, the weirder it seems to get. K-Rock's on-air personality Kevin Klein talking about the disappearance of Heidi Plank, who's friends with him and his wife. Heidi has al always been fun and like bubbly and everyone loves being around her. She's like such a caring, loving mom. That's why it was, it was very strange because like even, you know, when, when we started getting the text messages from friends going, has, has anyone seen... Has anyone seen or heard from Heidi? All who know her, they're really worried. No one can imagine her leaving her 10-year-old son without an explanation. And as a parent myself, I just started thinking about her, her son, and it, it, like, it breaks me. Everything just smells very suspicious. and like. This is actually really, really sad because um, the son celebrated his 11th birthday after Heidi went missing. And a lot of people thought, you know, maybe if Heidi's out there hiding or she left of her own free will or you know, she's MIA on purpose, she'll come back for his 11th birthday because she loves him. Like, this is her entire world, this kid. So she'll she'll be back. When she didn't come back on his birthday, everybody was very, well, disappointed, but also more scared. Now it seemed like whatever was keeping Heidi away from home and from her son 
was against her will. And Jim Wayne said that the son, you know, he was doing well. He's trying to be strong. But then he saw a picture of himself and his mother and he started crying. And he said all he wanted for his birthday was to just hear her voice again. So sad. So after Heidi was reported missing, the police conducted a wellness check at her home. They found it in pristine condition, although her phone and her laptop computer had been left behind. Which is weird, because Heidi walked out of the house on October 17th, and I don't expect her to bring her laptop computer, but I do expect her to bring her cell phone, because it's 2021. People don't leave their cell phones at home, especially when they're driving somewhere. And both Heidi and her vehicle are currently MIA. Like, we haven't found her car yet. Law enforcement told Jim Wayne that the location finder on Heidi's cell phone had been turned off and the GPS system in her Range Rover had never been set up. No one who knows Heidi believes that she just took off and ran away of her own free will. Her son was her life. She loved him endlessly. She was completely devoted to him. Additionally, Heidi had spoken to her mother and some family members a few days before she disappeared, and they talked about her coming home for Thanksgiving. Heidi's cousin, Trey Hawkins, said, quote, She also spoke to my other aunt and told her that she was coming home and wanted to see them all. Nothing was out of the ordinary in those chats. There was no indication that anything was wrong. The fact that my cousin was planning to come home for Thanksgiving shows she was making plans just days before she disappeared. And that her son's birthday was just days away leads me to believe she did not run, end quote. However, Heidi did mention something to her boyfriend, Naeem. Apparently, she had texted him in the days before she went missing about being scared of something. And I don't know the specifics of this text. I'm sure that that Heidi had texted more to Naeem than I'm scared. I'm sure she gave some specifics or at least some reasons of why she was scared, but they have not released that yet. And although we don't know for sure um, what was scaring Heidi, she did seem to be involved in something a bit intense at her job for Camden Capital. Jim Wayne said that Heidi didn't have a college degree or an accounting license, but she had started out working at Camden Capital as the personal assistant to Jason Sugarman, one of the managing partners. And within five years, she had worked her way up to bookkeeper, making over six figures. Um, Not much over six figures. I think it was $130,000, but a pretty good salary for somebody who doesn't have a license in this. So we have to talk about Jason Sugarman a little bit. First of all, Sugarman's father-in-law is Pete Gruber. Pete Gruber is the CEO of Mandalay Entertainment. Brought you a lot of films that I'm sure you're familiar with. And he is also the co-owner of four sports teams, the Golden State Warriors, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Los Angeles Football Club, which apparently is a major league soccer team, and an esports organization called Aomatic Gaming. Jason Sugarman is married to Goober's daughter, Elizabeth. Why is this relevant? Well, Heidi's ex-husband, Jim Wayne, says that he was contacted by the SEC on October 21st four days after Heidi was last seen. He says that he doesn't know how they got his number or his name. He doesn't know, like, how they're even made aware of him. But the SEC was asking him about Heidi and asking him about Jason Sugarman, Heidi's boss, and asking him about the company that Heidi worked for, Camden Capital. So for those of you who don't know, because I personally find this stuff very, very boring. I'm not, like, a financial person. I'm very bad with numbers. But the SEC is the Securities and Exchange Commission. The U.S. Congress created the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission in 1934 following the stock market crash of 1929. Our country decided that for capitalism to flourish, we needed to protect investors from fraud and unfair sales practices. So basically, among other things, the SEC keeps an eye on these investment companies to make sure that these investment companies aren't screwing you, the investor, out of your money, as so many of them do. You know, I'm sure it's hard for the SEC to keep up, but this is happening all the time. It's pretty gross. So why was the SEC asking Jim Wayne about Jason Sugarman and Camden Capital? Well, in a Los Angeles Sentinel article from July of 2019, we find out that Sugarman, who's also a minority owner of the Los Angeles Football Club, he was accused of defrauding investors of $43 million. He was charged by the SEC on June 26th with multiple violations of security laws in a civil complaint that accuses Sugarman and his partner, Jason Galenis, of essentially tricking a Native American tribal corporation into issuing $60 million worth of bonds useless bonds. The proceeds from the bonds were supposed to be used to buy annuities with enough left over to pay back the bond investors, but the SEC alleged that Sugarman, 
Galenus and other participants were able to gain control of the bond proceeds by acquiring two investment advisors who then used their authority to invest client pension funds into financing the acquisition of a global financial conglomerate of European and Bermuda insurers and investment advisors based in Virginia and Connecticut. A lot of words. Just trust me, bad stuff. It means bad stuff. It means that um, Sugarman and Galenus and other people tricked this Native American tribal group basically to make poor investments that they would then personally benefit from. Not the Native American tribe. Um, Galenus and Sugarman would benefit from what they were doing. The Los Angeles Times reported, quote, the pension funds were left with $43 million invested in worthless securities. Sugarman, however, benefited immensely from the scheme, indeed to a large extent. He was the biggest winner from the fraud, ending up with voting control over corporate assets that were acquired with bond proceeds and from which he ultimately siphoned almost $9 million in cash for his direct and personal benefit, end quote. So in 2019, I believe, uh, Jason Sugarman's partner, Jason Galenus, was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison for multiple financial frauds, including the tribal bond scheme that he took part in with Sugarman. So Jason Sugarman's partner, Jason Galenus, he appears to be a career white-collar criminal, and so is his father, John Galenus, who has a criminal record of white-collar crime going back to the 70s, and he's currently serving his second federal prison sentence for these white-collar crimes. It's just gross misconduct and it should never be allowed, but here we are. However, this is relevant to why the SEC was calling Heidi's ex-husband and asking about Jason Sugarman, and it may certainly be connected to what happened to Heidi Plank. Or it could not be. You be the judge. But remember, Jason Galenus, Jason Sugarman's partner, was already sentenced to prison for his part in the tribal bond scheme as well as other schemes. Jason Sugarman is currently under investigation by the SEC, and he has been. They haven't arrested him or you know, put him on trial or anything yet, but he is under investigation by them for the tribal bond scheme, as well as, I'm sure, other things, allegedly. I don't know, but definitely for that. So the SEC calls Jim Wayne, and they're asking about Jason Sugarman and Camden Capital, and Jim Wayne pretty much is like, I don't know anything, you know, because remember, Heidi was my ex-wife, so we don't discuss work and stuff like that anymore. But on October 29th, the FBI entered Heidi's home with guns drawn, expecting to find some sort of crime scene. According to Reddit, the property listed on the warrant, Heidi's home, is listed as a legal address for one of Jason Sugarman's business ventures. Now, I don't know. I saw the paper where it shows that there's a warrant for the FBI to go into the house. They're saying that the warrant matches the address that that is in Jason Sugarman's name for one of his business ventures. These documents could be doctored. I did find them on Reddit, but I thought it was worth mentioning. That way, if it, it does come out to be substantiated, then we know. Armed with a warrant and with guns drawn, federal investigators and robbery homicide detectives from the LAPD entered the home of the 39-year-old missing football mom. Now they went in and a source tells me that they were expecting to possibly find a dead body. That is not the case. Uh, what they're after, that remains the big question. Uh, some are wondering, speculating, that if possibly what they're searching for are any documents, paperwork related to Heidi Plank's business. Friends and family say Heidi Plank is working for a company that is now under a federal investigation for possible fraud charges. Uh, these federal investigators have searched high and low. They're even looking in plants that we've seen them go into the garbage, searching for any clues as to why this mom disappeared. Now, you may remember Heidi Plank disappeared 12 days ago. It was October 17th. The last time she was seen was on this security tape. The FBI were then seen leaving Heidi's house with some files. They also took her laptop into custody, um, her electronics, things like that. Okay, editing Stephanie here. So after I recorded this, and as I was editing this video, more information came out. The FBI did not take Heidi's laptop when they were in there on October 29th. In fact, Jim Wayne was the one who had Heidi's phone and her computer, and he gave it to the FBI, but he held on to them for roughly a week before he handed them over to the authorities. In this case, why is the ex-husband so dead set on foul play happening? 
Well, there's a lot of loose ends to tie up here. When I spoke with her ex-husband, Jim Wayne, there today, he told me that over the last two weeks since Plank has gone missing, he's received several phone calls from a man who claims to be her boss asking for her laptop. Her laptop and her phone, he says, were given to the LAPD in the investigation. They say that it is still very much an active investigation. They could not confirm certain details about the phone and the laptop, but James Jim Wayne says it's no longer in his possession. After this happened, Jim Wayne, Heidi ex-husband spoke to Jason Sugarman's assistant on the phone, and he claimed that Sugarman did not seem concerned at all with where Heidi was or if she was okay. He seemed mainly worried about her laptop, where it was. Jim Wayne said, quote, while I was on the phone with his assistant, I heard Sugarman in the background barking at his assistant to tell me, make sure he knows I want my laptop. There was no concern at all from my ex-wife's employer. It's a multi-million dollar company. They didn't offer to hire a private investigator or put up a reward. The only thing they seemed really concerned about was Heidi's computer, end quote. Jim Wayne spoke to Sugarman's assistant a few days later, and at that point, he claims that this assistant accused Heidi of stealing money from Camden Capital, their company. Well, Jim Wayne had already given Heidi's laptop to the police, and he was also told by law enforcement, who apparently went through Heidi's financial records, that Heidi did not have a lot of money in her accounts. Jim Wayne said, quote, It's pretty low of Sugarman and his minions to accuse Heidi of basically embezzling when she's mysteriously disappeared. End quote. Very low. Very low of Sugarman and his minions to do that. I agree. Jim also mentioned that Heidi had been Sugarman's personal assistant for several years before she was promoted to bookkeeper. And she, quote, knows all of Jason's and the company's secrets. She knows where the bones are buried. This whole thing just stinks. Something isn't right and I can't put my finger on it. End quote. And let's talk about surveillance footage. We have Heidi seen on her home surveillance system leaving her house on October 17th. And this same surveillance system captured her boss, Jason Sugarman, stopping by her house a few days after she went missing. They haven't reported exactly when this happened. The only timeline I could see was, I believe it was CBS that, that reported this security footage was taken a few days after Heidi went missing. So Jason Sugarman, he's not in like a three-piece suit and shined shoes. He's dressed casually. He rings the doorbell of Heidi's home. And when no one answers, he leaves a box of muffins on her doorstep. And then he leaves. And I'm sure you have questions about the surveillance footage from the Hope and Flower apartment complex, the building that Heidi's dog, Seven, was found wandering around on October 17th on the 28th floor. He was in the building roaming around on a floor in a totally secured building. So there has to be video in there of exactly what's going on. Surely such a secure apartment building who are so concerned about security measures They'll have, like, security cameras everywhere, and surely that footage would give us an indication of how Seven got into the building and who he was with. Now, the Hope and Flower Complex is owned by a company called the Omni Group. It's a nice place. It's got a sauna room, a music room, three pools. Three pools? That's an insane amount of pools for one apartment building, in my opinion. There's a large outdoor barbecue area, like, with bonfires and stuff, large private balconies. The apartment complex even offers yoga, bar, and spinning classes. But residents have raised concerns about criminal activity in the building. They have voiced their issues online about theft, rampant drug use, rowdy residents, and guns being fired there. So when the Dog 7 was first discovered there, police asked the owners of the building, the Omni Group, for access to search the building and parking garage, as well as permission to view their security camera footage. But the police were denied by the owners and told to come back with a warrant. Now, Jim Wayne did manage to get into the parking lot, um, the parking garage, and he was able to verify that he couldn't find Heidi's vehicle. It wasn't parked there, as far as he could tell. But with a woman missing, you would think that this apartment complex might be a bit more cooperative with law enforcement and maybe, you know, show them footage of that day to see who Seven entered with. Was Heidi ever there? That way we can kind of place her last movements. We can see if she was with somebody and we can figure out how the heck that dog made it to the 28th floor. Now, just recently, the robbery and homicide division of the LAPD, they were able to eventually seize the surveillance footage from the building after they got a warrant after weeks of non-cooperation from the owners of this building but they haven't released what or if they found anything on it. And I think it's I think it's pretty likely that after all that time, I think it was two and a half weeks, that the Omni group was like, no, we're not going to show you this footage. The relevant footage that, that the police need, 
may have been recorded over by now. And we saw this with the case of Phoebe Hansjuk, um, who died in the the trash chute of this very you know high rise luxury apartment building in Australia. When the police were finally able to get their hands on the surveillance footage, a lot of the relevant information had been recorded over because most surveillance cameras and systems sort of function on a loop. So they'll record for you know 72 hour period or a week period, and then it'll go back over and start recording over that to save space. So this is pretty much all we know. So it turns out it's been reported that Heidi was seen at the Hope and Flower apartment complex. She was seen in the alley behind. Meanwhile, a source close to the investigation says detectives now have video of Heidi downtown L.A. with her dog the afternoon of her disappearance. Walking in the alley behind the apartment building where her dog was strangely found walking alone in a hallway on the 28th floor. Now, I I would like to mention that Seven the dog has a microchip. So the way that Seven was found in the apartment building, it's a little unclear. Um, In some reports, it says that Seven had a microchip. In other reports, it says that Jim Wayne saw texts from a stranger on Heidi's phone, and this stranger was um, the woman or the man. It was a couple in the apartment building, but they brought Seven into their apartment after they found him wandering the halls. Heidi must have had her contact information on Seven's collar, so they called her phone, and Jim Wayne saw these messages and calls, and then he went to pick the dog up. And at one point, Jim Wayne even says, you know, I I completely forgot about the microchip, but I would be curious to know if the dog's microchip would show where he had been, which in turn would show where Heidi had been, right? So her GPS on her phone's turned off and her phone was left at home anyways. And her car's GPS location system was never set up, which I think that's weird. It's a Range Rover. Aren't they automatically set up? But maybe if Seven's microchip is able to have some sort of location monitoring and it, and it can show not just where he is, but where he was, like the, the route, the journey that he took with Heidi from her home to this apartment building, that would be interesting. Let me look that up, actually. Okay, so no, that's that's a, a bad theory. That's not going to work because it says here on a homeagain.com, pet microchips are not tracking devices. They are radio frequency identification implants that provide permanent ID for your pet. So basically it looks like, and I knew this, I knew this because my pets have had this. It looks like it's a chip, and then if someone finds your dog and it's missing and they can't get a hold of you, they can bring your dog to like a vet and then the vet can scan the microchip and see who the dog belongs to. But Heidi probably did have her contact information on his collar. Another thing that I also have with my dogs. So that was how they were able to get a hold of her. That sucks, man. That would have been great. That would have been great if that that could be the case. But that's pretty much all we know at this point. I've been looking every couple of days. I've been logging into Google early every morning to see if there's more that's come out, more that the police have found or released. Now, I will say that I believe the police know way more than they are releasing right now. They have that surveillance video from the Hope and Flower apartment complex. They have Heidi's computer, her phone. They'll know who she was talking to. They'll know what she was saying. They'll know what she was doing with work because it appears that the laptop the FBI took was her work computer from Camden Capital, the one that Jason Sugarman wanted back. So they know a lot right now. And the fact that they are being so quiet about it makes me feel that they are zeroing in on somebody. And why was Jason Sugarman at Heidi's house after she went missing leaving muffins when he knew that she was missing? In my opinion, and this is not saying that he's guilty because who knows if he if he was involved or not. He could just be, you know, kind of a scumbag when it comes to securities fraud and not be somebody who would take part in, you know, a woman going missing at all. But in my theory, in my true crime writer brain, what if Jason Sugarman went there, rang the doorbell, left the muffins, because he was trying to make it look like he didn't know she was missing, that he thought she would be home. Because if he didn't know that she was missing and he would drive all the way over to her house to pay her a visit and leave her muffins, then he obviously had nothing to do with her disappearance because he didn't even know she was missing because he dropped muffins off for her. Now, I would like to know, has Jason Sugarman been to that house before? Is he a regular visitor to Heidi's home? Is he often bringing over muffins? Do you know the muffin man? I would be interested to know if this was his normal behavior, if he just kind of dropped over at Heidi's often with breakfast foods and, you know, a friendly conversation. I'm going to go ahead and say probably not. Probably not. That probably wasn't something that he did regularly. So if he didn't do that regularly and he just did it a couple days after she went missing, then I would say it looks a little suspicious. But what are 
what are the theories? Now, mind you, um, once again, I'm not saying any of these things happened. There's just the most obvious theories of what could have happened, given what little we know. Some people online do believe that Heidi's ex-husband, Jim Wayne, may be responsible or involved. I personally do not, although I could be wrong. Okay, I've been wrong before. I'm not always right. Um, Jim Wayne, to me, seems very open when talking about Heidi. He seems incredibly concerned about how heartbroken his son is. And I think it's very clear that Jim loves his son, and Jim knows that his son loves Heidi. Heidi and and their son were very, very close. So I really can't ugh, I can't imagine what, what the motive would be for Jim Wayne to take his son's mother away from him. He just doesn't seem like that type of guy. And like I said, Jim speaks very highly about Heidi. Uh, they've been divorced for a while, several years. There doesn't seem to be any animosity. It's not as if this is a new divorce. It's not as if Jim Wayne hasn't remarried and would be jealous of Heidi's new boyfriend. It just seems like they were all friends and and they got along. There's also been something new that came out about Heidi's ex-husband, James Wayne. It says that he filed court documents in Los Angeles County Superior Court on October 26th, seeking full custody of their 11-year-old son. And he was awarded full custody of their 11-year-old son. Wayne said in court documents, quote, I urgently need these orders to put my son into therapy immediately because he is completely distraught at his mother's disappearance, end quote. We've also obtained court documents that show Jim Wayne went to court days after Heidi disappeared to change their shared custody agreement of their 11-year-old son. He asked for full custody. He wrote, I urgently need these orders to put my son into therapy immediately because he is completely distraught at his mother's disappearance. A judge granted the request, stating the father is awarded sole legal and sole physical custody of the party's minor child. We tried to reach Jim Wayne for comment, but he declined. So October 26th, it's roughly 10 days after Heidi goes missing and Jim Wayne is in court getting full custody of their son. That is a little disturbing to me. Now, he says it's because he needs to get him into therapy. I don't understand why he wouldn't be able to put him into therapy without having full custody. I'll have to look more into this, but I do have a little bit of a problem with that. Now, could Heidi's new boyfriend from San Francisco be responsible? Once again, I highly doubt it. He's already been spoken to by the police. I'm sure they asked if he had an alibi and they verified it. Like I said, San Francisco's not close to L.A. It would be very hard for him to get from San Francisco to L.A., do something to Heidi and get all the way back and have nobody notice it because he'd either have to fly or drive. And at that point, you have, you know, uh, you've left a paper trail. And then we have Jason Sugarman. It seems that he may be the most to gain from having Heidi drop off the map. Apparently, in her position at the company, her name was linked to several financial documents. Her name was on several financial documents. And it's possible that Heidi may have caught on to another scheme he was a part of and confronted him. Or Sugarman needed a fall guy, a way to direct attention of the SEC off of him and on to someone else like Heidi. That may be why Jason Sugarman's assistant told Jim Wayne that Heidi had been stealing money from the company to start building this narrative to cast suspicion on Heidi instead of Sugarman. With Heidi gone, the company could easily make it look as if she was way more involved in illegal activity than she actually was, if she was at all, or maybe she was involved in illegal activity and, and she just knew too much. I don't know. But if she was involved in legal activity, she doesn't have the money to show for it. So is she hiding that money somewhere? It's possible, but this is like a suburban middle-aged mother. So it just doesn't seem likely, but it's always possible. I mean, covering these cases, we've seen more unbelievable things than that. Now, Jim Wayne said that Heidi would have worked with Sugarman daily in her position, and she knew where the bones were buried. And that's very significant. That's either Jim Wayne trying to cast doubt off of him and onto Sugarman, or while they were married, Jim and Heidi, Heidi did tell him things about what she was doing at the company or tell him things about how often she saw Jason Sugarman, how often they interacted. So he knows that she knows something. But Jim just doesn't know what Heidi knows. Some people online speculate that maybe Heidi could be in witness protection. Maybe she is working with the SEC and the FBI to testify against Jason Sugarman. So they want to keep her hidden in, in the process. But if that's the case, then why was the SEC calling Jim Wayne and asking him about Jason Sugarman when they could just ask Heidi, who would actually know these things? And why was the FBI in her house taking her files and her laptop? 
clearly they don't have her, in my opinion, or they would just be able to ask her these things, or they would have said, hey, you're going into witness protection, you know, leave your phone because we don't want you to be tracked, but make sure you bring all relevant work documents that we're going to be using in this case, in this trial. So I don't think that's that's it. She's missing, and I worry that that she's encountered foul play. She's been missing for a couple weeks now. Her car hasn't been found. She hasn't been found. No sign of her. She didn't come home for her son's 11th birthday. She hasn't called. She hasn't reached out. It, it does really look as if somebody took her. But it also looks to me as if she left that house knowing she was meeting somebody that day. Who was she meeting that day? And that's important. She left her cell phone at home, I think, purposely. Specifically, most likely because she was told to leave her cell phone at home. So she was meeting with somebody that she either trusted or just didn't think or consider that they could have an intention of hurting her. But I do think she left the house knowing she was meeting with somebody. We don't know where she went. She wasn't seen after that. She hasn't been seen after that. And she left her cell phone at home. And then her dog turns up in this high-rise luxury apartment building in downtown L.A., just yards away from the Staples Center where the Golden State Warriors play. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm just going to put that out there. I know. It's cr- crazy. Crazy connection, right? But may may have nothing to do with anything, but it's not lost on me. And I know I'm talking to a bunch of smart people out there, and I know it's not lost on you either. Something sketchy is going down here. When you have men and women, it's 2021, <laughs> when you have men and women who are wealthy, in high positions of power, who feel that they are, you know, almost godlike in their ability to manipulate people, trick people, pull the wool over people's eyes, steal from them without getting caught, without repercussions. It's a recipe for disaster because now they they pretty much feel like they can get away with anything because they've already gotten away with so much. And I'm really, really worried about Heidi. I will end this by saying I just I really hope she comes home. I hope she comes home for the sake of her son, who I know right now is wrecked, wrecked, probably just completely devastated, misses her so, so much. Because I know that if I went missing, of all the people in my life, it would be my son, Aiden, who would be the most hard hit by it. And it breaks, it breaks my heart because we're best friends, me and Aiden. We're very, very close. And um, I just can't imagine. I, I, I really want Heidi to be found safely. But it just isn't looking good right now. So I'm going to put information about Heidi right here. Heidi is a white 39-year-old female with blonde hair, blue eyes. She's about 5'3 and 120 pounds. If you have seen or you have any information regarding the whereabouts of Heidi Plank, please contact the Los Angeles Police Department Missing Persons Unit at 213-996-1800. During non-business hours or on weekends, calls should be directed to 1-877-LAPD-247 or 877-527-3247. So keep your eyes out and stay on the alert, especially if you're in the Los Angeles area. You know, there's pictures of Heidi all over. I'm sure there's missing persons posters, but keep an eye out because... It's just, you know, we need all the help we can get. We need all the eyes out there that we can get. And that's all I have for you. I can't wait to hear what you think about this case in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you liked it. Share the video if you think it's worth sharing. (laughs) Once again, I do feel that this one is worth sharing because we have a missing woman. She could potentially still be alive out there somewhere. And I would really like to get her home to her son. So keep your eyes out. This is very sad. Thank you guys so much for being here. Stay kind, stay beautiful, and stay safe. I got blood, blood on the strings